Welcome everybody to Passion and Process with me, Ian Finn, and I'm Incia. And we've been doing something fun, interviewing each other, husband and wife. You know, we love. I, I we fell in love because we love talking <laughs> and sharing <laughs> ideas and writing poetry and that sure. stuff. And uh, I, I just thought it'd be great to share some of these ideas uh, with you all. So, NC, questions? I, I've got lots. I've got always lots. got lots of questions. <laughs> That's true. Just so you know. Yeah. But, you know, this morning we um, had a little bit of a change in our morning plans and our morning routine, which was actually a blessing because we ended up going for a long beach walk. And we were sitting at... Um, this little cafe um, by the beach, and I was just reflecting on how insane this year has been for us, how chaotic it's been, and I was thinking specifically about um, emotionally, how it feels like things that I was able to kind of bypass in a way, Mm -hmm. like things that were, you know, down there somewhere um, and I could sort of skirt past it, whatever that situation was, whether it was a relationship or a work thing um, or a life thing, um, I was sort of able to go, okay, well, I don't have to give it that much attention. I know it's not doing that great, but I can um, just sort of continue on over here. And I feel like something that 2020 has definitely brought for us mm. in our, both in our personal life um, and in our work space, in our work life, it's brought anything that wasn't quite working well, it's brought everything up right here. Interesting. And, and I kind of almost like feel it in my body. It's like, for me, I hold um, tension, I know, in my stomach, and then I feel it up here. And I was thinking about how so many of us on the planet right now are suffering from anxiety mm -hmm. and overwhelm and emotions, big emotions, um, that we don't quite know how to process. Yeah. And um, so I wondered, you know, how do you see that? And what what's your medicine? What are you, what are you plugging into? Yeah, all true story. <laughs> I think all of us can attest to 2020 being uh, whew, definitely a challenging test for all of us, um, as well as many blessings, of course. But yeah, so many things that we are trying to stuff down pop up. So I think most of us know the analogy of trying to stuff your problems down is like trying to hold a beach ball <laughs> under the water. Yeah. And so I think as what's coming up this year is yeah. all those beach balls we are holding down, ignoring, are all popping up, you know, kind of simultaneously. So yeah. yeah, it's a good question. How do you actually deal with it? I mean, for me, uh, obviously my, my tool is um, body awareness. I did a lot of work with a teacher named Susan Apotion and Bonnie Baybridge Cohen in Body Mind Centering and, mm -hmm. and Body Mind Psychotherapy. And really the whole idea there is to really plug into what is happening in your body I think most people know the saying, the issues are in your tissues. You know, one thing Bonnie would say is that your mind is like the wind and okay. your body is like the desert. So the desert sand dunes are always shaped by the wind. So you're, so what you're thinking shows up in your body I all love the time. That. Hold that thought for a minute. So the mind is like the wind mm -hmm. and your body is like the sand in so the that's, desert. That shapes... Yeah, so you, you, you know, and any yeah. body worker tells you that. I mean, BKS Iyengar says if you want to uh, know anyone's life history, look at their bodies. Their I mean, body. yeah, anyone. Yeah. So we, we've realized that mind and body aren't separate. They all show up. And the cool thing is, is that actually there is an inverse relationship, meaning that if you can actually attend to the sensations in the body, then this will actually change your mind. And like it works both ways, that actually the body shapes the sand of the mind is what I've learned um, as well. Yeah. So um, really what I try and do is, what I, what, when I used to try and sit down and meditate, mm -hmm. it was super hard when I would try and do yoga chit vritti nirodha, like just make your mind still, don't think of anything. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. Like I, I would get into these, I was trying to basically 
fight my mind with my mind. I was, meditation was like this mental war that never really went well. And what I realized is that if I can just attend to the sensations in my body, and you know, when we do our Commit to Bliss course coming up, the way I describe it is that, first of all, you plug in and feel the sensations of your body. Mm -hmm. And then a simple way I look at it is that some places the sensations will show up like a tight sea anemone, constricted. Okay. Okay. You know, you touch a sea anemone, it goes, it's yeah. a very primal thing. That happens in our own bodies. All those beach balls that are popping up in 2020 that we don't want, somewhere in your lower back, in your jaw, in your forehead, some kind of sea anemone is clamping down on you. And it's from our own thoughts, again, shaping our bodies. But the cool thing is, and, and so the other, but the other side of it is, when I'm full of life and prana and um, more of my higher vibrational self, mm -hmm. I'm not a sea anemone. I'm a pulsating jellyfish. Mm. So I mean, I'm shaped. I'm obviously very influenced by the ocean, right? So um, when I sit down to meditate every morning, I just do a body scan, and I'm asking myself, what's still tight and constrict constricted? Where am I? This tight sea anemone, okay. and how can I move these places like a jellyfish? And what I find is that when I can move those sensations out of my body, and that's why so many yogic breathing techniques are about keeping your mouth closed, which is the path of control, and there's a particular time for that. But what I need to do is actually soften my throat chakra and like really let go of holding yeah. um, as I'm breathing out. And I just completely, like it's really this simple. We think that breathing is easy, and it is. But to take one full breath where you're not constricted by any of those sea anemones, mm -hmm. like in your belly, like most of us have bricks in the belly, we don't realize it, or our chest, or our throats, or our jaws. Like to really get one full three-dimensional breath is very hard. Like I can't do it right now unless I really sit down and attend to my body. I might get 90% of it, but that last 10% is hard. And to me, that is the meditation process. And back to your question, is I need to kind of tune back into that place because whether well, it's 2020 or any other year, when I face these things in life that I didn't want to have happen to mm -hmm. me, even if it's just simple busyness, I have to find a way to move it out and I can't just sweep it under the carpet. So um, that's what meditation is and that's what, to me, and that's what I want to share in our courses, and that's what I do every day. Awesome. Um, I love that analogy of the sea anemones. Anemone, 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 yeah. Anemones. So that and, ten times fast. Sea anemone, sea anemone, sea anemone. And, yeah. and the jellyfish. So, so just to question that process again, is the point then to try to create more of the jellyfish sort of give and take, sort of more yeah. a softening, and then is that what you're actually visualizing in this body scan? With, like, what's um, your process? Yeah, I mean, the jellyfish is an analogy that works for a while, but I don't have to stick with it every mm -hmm. day. But it is interesting. I mean, our yoga mind-body medicine course, I talk about this a lot. And Lawrence, who I co-teach this with, who's a Harvard-trained integrative medicine doctor, sent me a slide from a presentation that a, a doctor was giving about the diaphragm working like a jellyfish and how when animals are in a fear or trauma response, mm -hmm. it doesn't move anymore. But when we're in a calm, relaxed place, it moves like a jellyfish. And he was like, check it out. They're using your their same analogy, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, and I love it. I was like, yeah, that's exactly it. I'm so glad that there's like medicine, yeah. medical doctors that are starting to like holistically see the body this way no, as well. It's, it's beautiful actually. And it reminds me of um, I just two days ago, I had a, a session with an osteopath here in Bali because I had a, a pretty bad um, motorcycle accident uh, exactly a month ago today. And um, a, the, one of the places she worked with me was freeing up the diaphragm. And, and I could really feel the shift after, not so much before. Uh, and I didn't even realize. And this is, I think this is um, a really key point in life right now is we don't actually know or feel when we are taking a constricted breath. That's it, yeah, yeah, and, I agree. And, and when, she, when she released my, you know, my ribs a little bit more and all of a sudden I could feel the diaphragm muscle 
fully re-engaging and kind of softening down well, as they took a yeah, breath in. It's it was amazing. Like this yeah, amazing remember you telling me about that. Yeah. And most people it's don't like, even know oh exactly God. how the yeah. diaphragm works. The diaphragm is a fascinating um, muscle. I mean, we're going to run out of time here in this one, but we can talk about another time if you want us to. Yeah, um, it's definitely that. part let's of the. Let's do, let's do kind of a whole session on just breath. And breathing. Well, it's a part of the Commit really, to Bliss really course good. is what I was trying to say. We spend like a lot of time doing what I call embodied physiology. Yes. So we really break down why we breathe, how we breathe, um, not to get stuck in like a lab coat, but actually so we can help with this process. And um, you know, just one quick fact about the diaphragm, it's here by the way, and it goes down when you breathe in, is that most times when we breathe in, in normal breath, it only goes down one centimeter. Mm -hmm. But in your fullest breath, it can actually go down 10 centimeters. Do you really kind of feel this? Yeah. And in, in a science, when they teach yeah. us, they call it a forced inhalation. But it's actually, to me, a full, it's not just forced, it's, it's just a full inhalation. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just when we're really gasping for breath sprinting. Um, and so that's what I mean by a full breath. To really get your diaphragm and your intercostal movies, uh, muscles moving is a really big thing. But just to sum it up, I was thinking about your question about the jellyfish and the uh, and, then, and this is the anemone. Mm -hmm. And what I really do is I just break it down into like tension okay. and expansion. So where you tense and like where you that. expand it. And yeah. if you can make the tighter places more expanded, then um, we'll, we will find that freedom and peace. So I hope this is all helpful. This is the type of thing we talk about over matcha. And, um, and often at the dinner table. Often at the dinner table, yeah. We can include a nine-year-old in some of these conversations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he rolls his eyes. Sometimes but. he rolls his eyes, but yeah, mostly <laughs> he gets it. So um, I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, good luck out there. I know it's a, a crazy year, but um, our positive thoughts are with you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Aloha. Aloha.